Just worship him. He deserves all honor, all adoration. Thank him because he's God and God alone. He's king over all the earth. Mighty one in battle. Our love, our strength, our shield, our anchor. Let's thank him. Because of all he's been doing. Are you afraid to thank him? Great is the faithfulness of the Lord. He who deserves all our praises. Let's thank him. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. Today is a glorious day in your presence. I will thank you because you are here in our midst. Thank you for your love. We we'll thank you for your favor. We we'll thank you for your keeping hands. Thank you because we know you love us. And thank you because of your plans for us. Lord, how we pray you will take all glory, all honor, all adoration in Jesus' name. And this morning as we are gathered here, we pray, Lord, you would speak to each and every one of us. Thank you because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may please be seated. Don't worry, our sister is fine. She was a little bit stressed and um, they will take care of her. Praise the Lord. First of all, let me thank those in the Crystal Squad. Where are those in the Crystal Squad? It's Crystal Squad members, rise up, rise up, rise up. Are you tired of clapping for them? Don't envy them, clap for them. Amazing night vigil. How many of you missed the night vigil? Crystal Squad, you are the ones that hosted the vigil now. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Amazing vigil. In fact, I have started hearing testimonies from the vigil. Someone spoke to me about four days ago or three days ago, and she was passing through some very tough times. And um, very tough times, it looked as if everything was just down. And while in tears, the Lord led her to go and listen to your vigil again. It was um, on the YouTube. And she said, after everything, her soul got lifted, the body got lifted, and I know many more miracles have happened. So God bless you for the vigil. Um, I was not in town, but thank God I connected. I wanted to sleep. I couldn't sleep because the vigil was so wonderful. I pray that the blessings that people will receive from the vigil will be multiplied for those of you in this squad. Amen. Clap for them again before they sit down. God bless you all. You know, there are some people in that squad that are saying, this is my squad. They did not join in the vigil. <laughs> We are the people in Charity Squad. Charity Squad. Please stand up. Charity. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. No. Are you tired? Clap for them. We will clap for you too very soon. God bless you. You put smiles on the faces of people. They made me to dress like a young person yesterday. You know, when I dressed up, I checked the gate. Ha. Huh. Am I sure I should go out like this? But they are wonderful people. They made me feel at home. Even though with my gray hair, I thought I was too old. But they made me feel young. And I saw the smiles on the faces of the young people. We are the Red Cross with the charity squad yesterday. How many of you have seen the pictures? Ah, let me just give you an expo. The pictures you saw are the ones they wanted you to see. The real pictures are in their squad um, WhatsApp group. Tell someone in charity squad to show you pictures. Very amazing pictures. If you finish seeing those pictures, you may want to pot, but don't pot. <laughs> Please, let's clap for them again. God bless you. Everyone that gave anything to make that program a success, I pray that the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Emerald Squad, where are you? Don't stand up yet. We can't clap yet. I know you are planning. How is your plan going? Wonderful. <laughs> if you have ever missed Sunday service in your life, don't miss the 12th of December, 2021, if you have ever. Because the Emerald Squad, they are taking over the service next week, Sunday. So if you have ever missed Sunday service, if I told them when they came to meet me, I said I will not park inside next week, Sunday, because I know some of you will come late. And I know when you come late, you will feel bad. 
that you will not have space inside. So I will keep space outside. What I've just done is I've told our treasurer to try and put a canopy, not those ugly, ugly white canopies, a beautiful canopy outside. So if you come late, we'll pardon you, but you will stay outside. Because next week, Sunday, I can't give you too much expo into what they have planned. But the Emerald Squad, they have been planning. And in fact, I felt bad when I heard of the people in that squad, even though they've been quiet. But I heard of the people in that squad. They are very talented people. Come and see talent on display next week, Sunday. The only thing I pleaded with them, they should let me preach. Can you please help me tell them, let PT preach next week? Uh -huh. So the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Some squads were very active before. Suddenly, they went quiet. I don't know what is happening. They are looking at themselves. Eh? Some squads were very active. And um, I know you will come back. Eh? Say amen. Now, if your active squad has gone quiet, the Lord will revive your squad. Incidentally, today I'm speaking about fellowship. You know, as I look at the different squads, the things happening in the squad, the bond in the squad, the joy of having a sense of belonging that comes with being a member of the squad, the preparation for heaven in the squads, the prayer we pray for each other in the squad, heaven is going to be a beautiful place. You know, the way the squad members take care of each other, care for each other, some even go on combined visits to each other. I'm speaking to you on the privilege and possibilities of meaningful fellowship with God. The privilege and possibilities of meaningful fellowship with God. In 1 John chapter 1, from verse 1, I'm going to read to 10 quickly. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. The essence of fellowship is so that joy will be full. Fellowship happens so that we have fulfillment. Right from the beginning, when God created Adam, God created Adam and instituted fellowship. And as believers, if we fail to maintain fellowship, we will not be fulfilling God's plan. God could have left man created, standing alone as a sole champion. Achieving every goal possible. But God said, no. I have not created man to be that sole creation that moves in a solo way, independent. He said, no. There must be dependence on each other. He says, there should be fellowship. The fellowship is to make joys full. And in fact, Jesus Christ set an example. He had fellowship with the Father. And God expects us to have fellowship. And in First John, this apostle of love, he said, truly, we need to have fellowship with one another. And he says, as we fellowship with one another as believers, that fellowship is an extension of the fellowship with the Father. It doesn't stand in isolation. And that's why the Bible says, where two or more are gathered together in my name, I'm what? I'm there in their means. The Lord says, when my children fellowship, I put my stamp. On it. The Lord wants us to fellowship with each other. He wants us to be with each other. And if we fellowship with each other truly and transparently, there's going to be joy in the fellowship. In verse 6, he says, If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. You know, the other day someone asked me, someone said, Pastor, I'm praying about the will of God. But what if I don't get any answer? Can I just pick anybody and marry? And they were expecting me to answer in your normal, orthodox, regular way. And I shocked them with something. I said, if truly every young man 
who is in the church is genuinely saved. Every young lady who is in the church is genuinely saved. Genuine conversion. Real deep conversion. Anybody can marry anybody. And they looked at me. Ha! Where is this coming from? I said, it's the truth. It's the truth. When God told Abraham, when Abraham told his servants to go and look for a wife for his son, did he tell them who to look for? He said, God, would you, when you get there, just get me a girl there. Because the belief system, the culture is similar. The reason why you have to pray is that you don't know the heart of that other person. The reason why you have to pray is you don't know the intention of that other person. Because the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who knows it but who? God. And so if you jump into wedding saying, oh, I'm going to get married to this person without knowing who the person really is, you'll be entering trouble. Are we together? And that's why the Lord is saying, our fellowship should be in the light. When you come into fellowship, the fellowship disintegrates when people are not honest, are not in the light. As we look at this passage, we see the word fellowship from verse 1 to 10 appears so many times. What is the meaning of fellowship? Fellowship means communion. Fellowship means association. Fellowship means interaction. Fellowship means friendliness. Fellowship means love. Fellowship means helping each other. The continuous use of the word of fellowship in this brief chapter shows its importance. In fact, if you want to have an indispensable Christian life, then you need to have real fellowship. And as we look at the fellowship here, he talks, number one, about fellowship with the Father. Number two, fellowship with the Son, Jesus. Number three, fellowship with the early apostles. Number four, fellowship with other believers. Number five, fellowship with brethren in the local church. And number six, there should be fellowship in our family unit. When there is real fellowship, it transcends everything you do. Fellowship. Tell your neighbor fellowship. The Lord is calling us to fellowship. And fellowship cannot be in isolation. Fellowship would require interconnection. It would require some resource commitment, some sacrifice. You can't have fellowship if you are not ready to put something on the table. There needs to be sacrifice. There needs to be something. You know, as I scan once in a while through the school, don't worry, I don't scan it regularly, so you don't say, hey. He's watching what I'm sending. As I scan once in a while through the groups, I see some people who just wait to be attended to. Then you will not be the true member of the fellowship. If a true member of a fellowship, you need to put something on the table. And even God, when he created the fellowship with Adam, he told Adam, Adam, bring something to the table. If God could do that, how much more when mortals fellowship with each other? You need to put something on the table to make the fellowship to be what it should be. Three things quickly, the priority of true fellowship with God. And as we talk about fellowship, you need to understand that our fellowship with each other is to enable us to have true fellowship with God. The reason why believers are expected to come together is so that believers can support each other, build each other. You know, as we come into this month of December, the month of early release of blessings, as the Lord begins to release his blessings upon you, you need to see how to lift another person up. You need to see how to bring up another person. Because if you climb alone, when you get to the top, it's a very lonely place. You need people with you. You know, today, it's much more difficult for me to eat food from anybody or to drink water from anybody. Why? Because I don't know who is who again. When I was younger, I could eat anything. I could enter anywhere. I could buy food from any place. But as I started climbing up in my success career, in my um, success um, ladder, I found out that 
I heard this person went to eat something. Someone went to where they were selling something because they knew you always bought something there and they actually poisoned it. And I've heard this one die from food poisoning. I've heard this one hospitalized from food poisoning. I've heard this one have this from food poisoning because they stand alone as lone stars. And there is no surrounding network to help them stay up there. There is nobody that when they want to fall, the person holds to cushion them up. That's the essence of fellowship. And if we fail to do that, we will not build each other up. If you go alone, when you dry up, who will restore you? Who will renew you? As you go to the book of 1 John and 2 John and 3 John, it talks continually about fellowship. That see, our lives as mortals has ups and downs. I'm not talking about backsliding. I'm talking about storms of life will come. I'm talking about challenges of life will come. If you don't have a network that can hold you strong, then you would collapse. God has planned fellowship so that we will be able to also have the right to walk with him. The priority of true fellowship. So as I talk about true fellowship with God, begin to understand that true fellowship with God starts from a transparent fellowship with other people. In First John chapter 1, in verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you, that eternal life which was with the Father was manifested unto us. You know, the psalmist says it this way. He says, ye are gods. Have you heard that before? That means there is the image of God in you. God loves fellowship. You know, God can operate alone. How many of you know that? Ah, if you don't know, go and ask the Syrian army that came to fight against the children of Israel. If you don't know, Go and ask the army that came to surround Eli. Is he Elijah or Elisha now? Elisha. When they surrounded Elisha, what happened? How many angels? 10,000? No. No need. If God can create angels that can do that much, God can operate alone. But guess what? Even God himself is a fellowship. God the Father, God the Son, and God the who? And they did not stop at just that. They created a group of people, worshippers. Then after that, they empowered a group of people, men. God wants worship. And he's saying God's purpose for creating man is so that there can be fellowship with him. And that's why we need to prioritize our fellowship with God. Fellowship with God should be the priority of every believer. It is communion with the creator, the judge of the whole earth. And he's the giver of eternal abundance and spiritual life. And he's the fountain of all goodness. In Genesis chapter 3 from verse 7 to 10, it says, The eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. You see, when you break your fellowship with God, listen to me, church, you will know. When they did what they shouldn't do, they realized they were naked. Breaking your fellowship with God makes you exposed. It makes you exposed. And as we have fellowship with each other, make sure your fellowship with God is not broken. Because every time you break that fellowship, you lay yourself out for easy attack by the enemy. These people who had fellowship with God, the Bible says when they broke that fellowship, they knew they were naked. Then they now went to sow fig leaves. You know, the challenge with the many believers who break their fellowship with God, instead of getting themselves restored fully, many of them try to create fig leaves. Temporary solutions that won't last. You use fig leaves to sow cloth. Won't the fig leaves dry up? Are you with me? Won't it dry up? They could have even looked for the skin of an animal. You see, when you break your fellowship with God, it affects your spiritual reasoning. You stop reasoning right because the enemy steps in and creates confusion. That's why we need to make sure our fellowship with God is always right. And God called them. Thank God. God did not abandon them. You know, if you are here this morning and your fellowship with God is thinning out, God hasn't abandoned you. Today he's going to restore you. The Bible says the Lord called them. And when the Lord called them, the Lord said, see, Adam, we are thou. 
God is looking for you. You know, like that songwriter wrote, he said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to him in prayer. You see, God never abandons you. Men may forget you. Men may abandon you. Men may think you are not capable. Men may think you can't bounce back. There's someone who would never, ever abandon you. And this morning, I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know how tough it is. I don't know how difficult the challenge may be. The Lord will not abandon you. I thought I would hear you say a real amen. amen. He would keep you. Amen. You would bounce back. Amen. You know, as I go through scriptures, it is those that people never expected to achieve certain levels of greatness that are always the ones that when they bounce back, they shock others. Look at David. Whoever thought that David would be a man of battle was just an ordinary ruddy boy, fit to take care of the sheep while the stronger ones went to war. And today, even heaven is called the city of David. Oh, I pray for someone in church this morning. Heights they never thought you would get to, you would be the consolidator of others in that height. Because God never lets you alone. He calls. Even when you pretend you are not hearing him, he still calls. Priority of our fellowship with God. To have the right type of fellowship with God before I quickly wrap up and the other one. Number one, there should be conversion. In John chapter 1 in verse 12, as many as received him, to them gave you the power to be called the sons of God. Number two, there should be conviction. You should want the relationship. God is not a bully. He wants you to desire the relationship with him. Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. God wants you to desire that fellowship with him. Number three, when you want to make sure you have the right fellowship with God, there needs to be confession. God doesn't want you to be ashamed of talking about him. He wants you to talk about him. In 1 John chapter 4 from verse 14 to 16, he says, we have seen and we do testify. Talk about me. Was it here I was talking about the fact that there are some people, okay, no, I was at a wedding yesterday. I was chairman at a wedding yesterday, so I had to put on my agbada. I'm going to put on my agbada for your wedding very soon. But please don't make me chairman so that I can eat food. I've noticed when you are chairman at weddings, you end up not eating. Eh? I was chairman at a wedding and they didn't serve me food. Those who sat ordinarily, they ate enough. So please, your own wedding, don't make me what? Uh -huh. You didn't talk, don't make me what? Ha, it's okay. And I was there, I was talking to them. I said, many times, we want to profess things in our hearts without speaking them out. How would I know what is in your heart? How will I know you love me? Praise the Lord. If you are married and you are here today, after the service, if your husband doesn't say I love you, please just come to my office and pull him along. Because God wants us to talk to him, to confess him, to share about him. He says, confess it with your mouth. He says, that which we have seen, we testify. If you want to have a right relationship with God, he watches to see how you talk about him. How proud you are to be associated with him. And I want to thank you amazing people in Faith Church. One of my colleagues met me and said, ah, so you are the one they call pity. I said, eh, am I the one? He said, you are the one, Joe. I said, yes, I'm the one. He said, oh, ah, now I know. You have been hiding from us. I said, what happened? She said she entered Uber. And when she was in the Uber, someone was just discussing with her. And the person said, oh, how are you? That she met the nicest person she had ever seen in that Uber. And I was like, how does Uber connect to pity? And she said, eventually she made a mistake. She asked the person, are you a Christian? Then he said, yes, I am. Then the person said, I'm not just a Christian. No. I go to the best church in Nigeria. She said, ah, ah, take it easy. Now, which is the best church? She said, ah, 
that if you come to that church, you, you know, the person said hyping the church. By the time she told me what the person said, even me, I was calculating in my mind. <laughs> I was like, ah, is it the same church that I come to? He said, ah, you have to come to that church. Oh. And the person said, eh. Hey. She now said, ah, I have one guy in my office, so he goes to deeper life. Said, eh, hey, what happened? Said, I went for a burial recently of his father. Ah, he said, is it so, so person? She said, yes. Ah, that is pity. Make sure you come to Faith Church. I love the way you talk about the church. But please, confess God that way. He's also looking forward to be proud of us talking about him. Tell your neighbor, talk about the Lord. Then there must be communication. In Matthew chapter 12 from verse 7 to 18, it talks about Moses. He said, Moses communicated. He said, I will speak with Moses mouth to mouth. Communication. If you are going to have the right type of fellowship, prioritize fellowship with God, then you need to commune with him. You need to talk with him. And it's not a one-way traffic. You talk and you listen. God speaks in many ways. And we all know he speaks. You may not think you are hearing him, but God speaks. Even in the silence, he speaks. And he wants us to commune with him. He doesn't want a one-way traffic. God is not a boss. He's a leader. He inspires us to greater things. He doesn't want to just give us directive. He wants us to communicate with him. There should be communication. He says in that number, sorry, Numbers chapter 12, verse 7 to 18, he says, My servant Moses, who is fruitful and faithful in all my house with him, I will speak mouth to mouth. Then there must be commitment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 17 to 18, he says, Wherefore, come out from among them. He says, Be ye separate. If you want your fellowship with God to be what it should be and what it is, then there must be some consecration. There must be sacrifice. Every great relationship requires sacrifice. If you are in a friendship and the person does nothing, you will get tired. Am I right? You will get burnt out every time you are the one calling. Some of us need to do some restitutions. I need to call some of my friends back because I'm not good in picking calls. And the other day, one of my friend's wife called me. He said, your friend though, has decided he won't call you the first time again. That except you start calling. And truly, I cast my mind back. I felt bad. Because this young man checks on me every time. Every time. He will send me happy new months. He will call me to say hello. After I thought through what I did, I felt bad. And I just imagined... If you have a relationship with God and you don't want to put anything on the table, you want him to do it. You know, sometimes some people want God to do everything. Oh, Lord, as I want to eat, make sure food is available. Thank you, Lord. Please, create someone to come and cook the food. Lord, they should set the table very well for me. Lord, you see, I'm so tired to eat this food they have brought. Can you please make sure the food just appears inside my stomach and I'm strengthened? Some people want God to do everything. There are certain things you pray about that God doesn't intervene in because he has given you the wherewithal to get it done. He wants you to do something. There needs to be consecration. There needs to be collaboration. In Genesis chapter 18, if you read from verse 17 to 19, God said, Abraham, come, let us have a collaboration. Let us have a discussion. Let us agree on what we want to do. God wants us to collaborate with him. Because when you collaborate with God, there is a sense of ownership in you to take that thing through to the end. Collaboration. Work with me. Finally, there should be continuity. If you check Genesis chapter 5 from verse 21 to 24, it says, Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And after that, Enoch walked with God. God wants continuity. And I'll tell you why God wants continuity. I told you you are like God because he has put his image in you. Am I right? If you have a friend who is on and off, today the friend is okay, tomorrow the friend is down, next tomorrow, will you trust that friend to always have something to take care of you? No. Because, you know, the friend is, permit me to use this word, panok, panok. You know what they call panok, panok? On and off. 
on and off. So, even the Bible says, middle not with those who are given to change. Everyone wants a friend that you can trust that when you need, the friend will be there. Which is one of the reasons why we established this squad. Because I found out there are so many lonely people in this life. The world is lonely. We need people who we can trust. Because when you come to your low points, you become very vulnerable. Am I right? If you don't have someone you can trust, they will take advantage of you. And that's why God wants to go into a collaboration with us. And as it goes into that collaboration and continuity, we will become who we should be in Jesus. And the possibility of transparent fellowship amongst the godly. God wants our fellowship with each other to be transparent. In 1 John chapter 4, chapter 1 verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be, may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God wants us to have a transparent fellowship with him and with each other. It wants our fellowship with each other to be predictable. It wants when I call you, when I talk to you, let it be predictable. Let it be something I don't need to second guess to know what you are doing. And if you are here, you're always looking at how to get the advantage over everybody whenever you are called upon. You are not having a transparent fellowship. There are times in a fellowship that you, may be at the receiving end of the pain. Am I right? The other times you should add. If you always want to be the one who gets the best out of every situation, you will not be a good friend. You will not. Because the Lord expects there to be transparency in our relationship. You want your voice to always be heard. You want what you have said to always be taken. You want what you want to do to be the best choice at all times. No. Sometimes when you bring something to the table, let it go. Praise the Lord. I was in a particular class doing training just a few days ago. And while I was speaking to them, I gave them an assignment. And when I gave them an assignment, group, these are managers in one of the oil companies in the country. I broke them into groups and I gave the three groups this assignment, one of the, you know, team bonding assignments. And what was the assignment? The assignment was simple. Take this piece of paper and pass the largest member of your team through the piece of paper. I wanted to see the creativity in the team. You know, and one of the teams, they listened to everybody. In fact, the oldest member of the team gave a suggestion. Others refined it. Everybody brought in their thoughts. And they took that cardboard paper which I gave them. And they cut the paper. And they did a very thin fence and made it big. So that the biggest member of their team could pass through it. Another team said, okay, as we look at the biggest member of our team passing through this paper, let us write all the qualities of the biggest member of our team and put it through the paper. I've been in classes where they will snap the picture, of the, because it's just about creativity. They'll snap the picture of the biggest member of their team, they'll cut a hole through the paper, and they'll pass the phone. You have passed the biggest member of your team through the, am I right? Some other people will write the name of the person and cut a small hole through the paper and pass the name of the person. You have passed the biggest member of your team. But there was this particular team. They came with a blank sheet of paper. And when they came to the front, they said, well, we have decided that this assignment you gave to us is impossible. And because it's impossible, we have come with a plain white sheet just to show the whole world that the assignment, that's the summary of what they said. And they thought I would let it fly. I discovered as they were doing the assignments that in that particular team, one particular person was shutting down all the ideas of everybody. And because she's senior to all of them, they didn't want to argue. This one brought, no, 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 how, how, how can you think like this? Ha, ha. Come, did you go to school? Think, think creatively. She didn't bring anything to the table. By the time she shut down the ideas of everybody, when the time came for them to present, they came with a blank sheet of paper. I told them, I said, your team is having a challenge because you are killing ideas. You are not letting others speak. I spoke harshly to them. 
And after, one of the team members came to me. He said, sir, ah, are you a magician? I said, why? He said, you knew what was happening there? This madam was just shutting up all ideas. He said, I felt so bad. When I spoke, the way she spoke to me, I felt I was a child. I felt so annoyed. that me. After all this, my years of experience, he has gray horn. He said, look at how she shut me down. And when she shut us down, all of us said, let us leave everything to her. Let us see what we come out of it. If you are in fellowship with people and they find out you always want to take advantage of every situation and everybody, you will be abandoned. You will not realize you are abandoned. Because you will still be living in dreams land, thinking everybody is accepting you. But truly, truly, you have been left alone. And that's why the Lord is saying, a fellowship should be transparent. And there should be truthfulness. Learn to speak the truth to each other. And don't speak it with harshness. Because you, you are speaking the truth. You don't know when the truth will be spoken to you tomorrow too. Speak in love. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you read from verse 14 to 22, we're all parts of one body. We're all parts of one body. If you are the hand, don't make too much noise. Because if the brain should keep quiet, the hand will dry up. Am I right? If you are the leg, don't make too much noise. Because the intestine that is not seen, if the intestine should just get twisted, have you heard of twisted intestine before? And food is coming. Intestine said, I'm not going to eat. Why are you not eating? Look at this leg. The leg feels it's better than me. What will happen to the leg? The leg will dry up. But members of one body. Fulfill your own responsibility. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 14 to 22. Even though we have different functions, we have different approaches, we have different emphasis, we must unite together to move the body forward. You know the reason why we are studying this today as we're getting into this month? God doesn't want you to be a lone star. I've studied geography. Lone stars eventually disappear. But stars that belong to planets, they stay for a very, very long time. You would stay. And not just stay, you will stay strong. The Lord wants us to come together. The eye should not tell the hand, I have no need of you. He wants us to come together, walk together, be strengthened together. When we walk together, four things happen. Number one, we experience breakthroughs. Number two, we experience breakouts. Number three, we experience break-ins. Number four, we experience breakforth. I'll read one Bible passage before I explain it. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, from verse 11 to 12. 2 Samuel chapter 10, from verse 11 to 12. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Amnon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage. Let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. He said, see, as we are going into this battle, I will be here, you will be there. If the enemy is fighting you, they are too strong for you, I will come and, you know, help you. If the ones you are fighting, they are too strong, you will come. He said, there would be that unity. And when there is that unity, you find out, number one, you experience breakthrough. What is breakthrough? You experience constant victories. That thing that you need to pass through to a match to your next level, you experience breakthrough. You experience breakout. You become celebrated. Listen to me. If you're a low star, who would celebrate you? They may talk about you, but you will not be celebrated. But when you are part of a fellowship, when you are part of a strong group, when you achieve something, they will celebrate you. And when many people are celebrating you, guess what? People will find it much more difficult to pull you down. You know why? Because they look at the network of people celebrating you. They say to themselves, ah, if we touch him, ha, see all the people we have to fight. That's why he wants us to be part of a fellowship. And again, there's a break in. You know, when you are part of a fellowship, there are certain things you need to get into. One of the members of that fellowship may have the key. You know, I particularly love one of the squads. I love all the squads, by the way. But for this particular instance, for now, I love one particular squad. In that squad, one way or the other, when you are quiet for three, four days, someone is calling you out. Uh-uh. Where is so-so person? They're like, ah, it's true. She has not spoken for the past... And, you know, people are now confessing, ah, you are the ones bringing me out, oh, I like being on my own, I'm coming out. But guess what? Some of those people that like being on their own and are coming out now, they are the champions of bringing people out. 
So not that they didn't want to come out before, but experiences have made them to be shut down. They've seen things that they don't want to talk again. They've spoken and people have bullied them. Or they've come out and people don't understand them. And because of the experiences, they shut themselves in. You know, there are certain times you need people to help you to break in into places. You don't know who has the key to a certain door you want to open. And guess what? If God has given the key to someone in your fellowship, he will not come down and give another key to you. There are no spare keys in heaven. There are master keys, but no spare keys. That's why he wants us to have fellowship. If he creates spare keys for every key, then there will be no need for fellowship. Am I right? Ah, so people are worried. Ah, Pastor, who is that person holding my key? Today, today, by fire, by force. Let me get my key. Don't worry, you will get your key. But fellowship. Fellowship. And I was going through scriptures. I found out that most of the people who were exceptional in scriptures were people who had fellowship. Mention them. Who are the great people you can look at? Abraham. Did Abraham good, have good fellowship with people? Sacrificial fellowship. Look at Job. His house was always party. I don't know how he used to cope. Did you read it in your Bible? He was always doing parties. That man. So that means believers too can do parties. When I read the story of Job, I said, hey, always having party. In fact, the Bible recorded it that way. He was a man of the people. Look at David. Always looking for how to take care of people. To the point that when he found the king couldn't do it, he said, how can they disgrace my king like that? I would go in. And God said, David, I will be with you. Look at someone like Peter. Peter was a relationship person. He was harsh sometimes, but he was a relationship person. Great people maintain good relationships. And God has made us to be like that. So, as we talk about this fellowship, if you want to break in, if you want to break out, if you want to break forth, then you need to be in fellowship. Finally, as we, before we pray, a purity and total freedom by his grace. A purity and total freedom by his grace. In that first John verse 7, it says, if we walk in the light, chapter 1, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. You know, when you have true fellowship, number one, you are redeemed when you come into true fellowship with God. We see that in 1 John chapter 3 from verse 2 to 6. Number two, you are revived. In 1 John chapter 4, it says here of God, little children, you have overcome them. When you have true fellowship with each other and with God, you are revived. You know, your spirit is revived. As you came in, for those who came in for, you know, even the vigil last week, Friday, you know, some of you came in here and you had heavy hearts. You know, your boss in the office had just said something that annoyed you. You are looking at your targets. You are not achieving your figures. You've applied for one particular job, and when you applied, they are meant to call you for the next stage. They have not called you, and you just wanted to look for an escape route. And as you came in and you said, praising God, what happened? You started feeling lighter. The load started coming up as you looked at this other person praising God, or as you heard this other person sharing testimony. That's the essence of fellowship. You get revived. You get revived. Number three, it helps for restoration. It helps for restoration. You know, when you are going astray, when you found, find people who you started with still standing strong, something pulls you back. You know, as I look through this um, wonderful group of young people, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to minister to you Sunday by Sunday. When I look at some of your lives, and some of you have known for the past 20 years, I knew when you had your tough times, some of you even departed from the faith. You went out. But guess what? The way you have come out strong in the past one year, and as I look at some of you here, even though you went out, you were bitter, you were sad, you were angry, you didn't like your parents because they were forcing you to be in the church. So when you had your freedom, you said, now, mommy, daddy, I have my freedom. But guess what? Now you are here on your own, and you are waxing stronger. Why do you think you are waxing stronger? Is it just because of you? It's because there is a friend who did not abandon you, who says, oh, no, let's go, and you came. And now you are the one even bringing other people up. That's the essence of fellowship. Fellowship helps us to be revived. Number four, fellowship restores us. Number five, fellowship renews us. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, And I put on the new man, 
which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who has created him. Finally, number seven, fellowship is for refreshing us. It refreshes us. In Ephesians chapter 3, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You know, as we have fellowship with each other, I'm going to pray a special prayer today because it's the month of release. It's the first Sunday in the month. I'm going to pray that the Lord will open the doors, windows of heaven for you. And as the windows get opened and the rains pour on you, I'm going to pray that the Lord will give you a network that will make you work stronger. Let's rise up upon our feet and just begin to worship him and come before the Lord. And if you don't have the right fellowship with him this morning, you have an opportunity to have that right fellowship with him. You want to tell the Lord, Lord, this morning I come to you. It's the month of early release. That means the blessings of 2022 will start coming upon me this year. Lord, beyond blessing me, give me a great group of people that will make sure that I get stronger and stronger. Position me in the fellowship and make me to be the right person in that fellowship. That as I fellowship with you and fellowship with the brethren, my life will only get sweeter. He's calling us to a sweeter fellowship with him. He's calling us to a better fellowship with him. So why don't you just come to him and say, Lord, I want to have the right fellowship with you because it's my time to break through. It's my time to break forth. It's my time to break out in celebration. It's my time for people to begin to hear that I am serving a God who never fails, a God who never forgets, a God who never leaves his children alone. Why don't you come to him in prayer this morning and say, Lord, I come to you. I come to you. If you've not been hearing God speak, do you know you can tell him at this time because his presence is all over here. You can say, Lord, I want to hear you speak. I want to hear you speak. Through the noise, let me hear your voice. Through the storm, let me hear your voice. Through the difficulty, let me hear your voice. Through the challenge, let me hear your voice. I want to hear your voice more and more in this my journey so that I would be that true image of yours here on earth. The fellowship with the Father. The fellowship with the Father. The fellowship with the Son. The fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know all those struggles you are struggling sometimes? It's because you are not hearing His voice. All those tough times that come and weigh you down. It's because you are not hearing His voice. Are you here this morning and in your inner man you are weak? In your inner man you have received certain news or certain things have happened that have made you feel so low and so down. Why don't you come into fellowship with Him this morning and say, Lord, I've come into your presence this morning. Speak to me, O oh Lord. I've come into your presence this morning. Let me experience you this morning. In a different way, let me experience you this morning. In a different dimension, let me experience you this morning. More than anything around me, let me experience you this morning. Let your voice, like that sweet smelling sabo, let it restore me. If you know you have drifted away from him, why don't you come to him this morning and say, Lord, pull me back to you. I would rather be with you than be out of you. I would rather be for you than be against you. Lord, Lord, don't make me to be on the opposing side of your grace. Don't make me to be on the opposing side of who you are. Bring me back to you. Bring me back to you. Bring me back to you. Come back this morning, dearly beloved. He loves you. He loves you. Men may have forsaken you. Men may have abandoned you. Men may have left you alone. There's someone who never did. There's someone who never did. And this morning he's calling you, come home. He's saying, come home. Come back to fellowship with me. Don't cover yourself with the fig tree. The fig tree will dry up and you'll be exposed. The fig tree will dry up and people will see your nakedness. He's calling you, forget the fig tree, come to me. Forget the fig tree. Let's have a talk again. Let's walk together again. Why don't you speak to him from the depths of your heart this morning and say, Lord, I want that fellowship with you. That fellowship with you. That fellowship with you. That when I come into your presence in fellowship, I know you are there for me. I know you are there with me. I know you are holding my hands. Let me feel your presence around me. Let me feel you holding my hands. Oh, so many things are pulling me far away. But let me feel you holding my hands. Let me feel your warm embrace. Let me feel you. Let me feel you around me. So that everything else 
will become non-essential and help me Lord let there be a fellowship around me a network around me that will make me stronger a network around me that will make me love you more a network around me that will not take advantage of me a network around me that will be there as sharing voices to keep me going why don't you speak to the Lord at this time speak to the Lord at this time when you come into fellowship with him as we pray for early release this morning you are going to experience a greater torch are you down are you feeling out already are you feeling so drained already come into fellowship with him 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 this morning he's by your side dearly beloved he never forgot you oh yes he's by your side he's by your side he's by your side he's by your side he's there by your side oh thank you father thank you father what a friend we have in jesus oh our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Breathing to God in prayer Oh, what things we are Have we try us and temptations? Have we try us and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Is there trouble this morning, dearly beloved, He's calling you. Do not be discouraged. Find a friend so faithful. Can we find a friend faithful? Ooh, a sorrow's Jesus knows our every Fellowship and say, Lord, I have no other place to go to. 
Lord, I have no other one to go to. Lord, it's time to leave these bodies. Lord, who will speak to me if you don't speak? Who will lift me up if you don't lift me up? Who would raise me up if you don't raise me up? Why don't you tell him? I say, Lord, I'm before you. Lord, I'm before you. Lift up these bodies. 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 You are the only one I can trust to always be there for me. You are the only one I can be sure of to take me through. Lord, this month of December starts with me. Start with me. Start with me. Start with me, oh Lord. Oh, be with me. Be with me. Be with me. Be with me. Lift up this body, Lord. Lift up this fear, oh Lord. Lift up this darkness, Lord. Lift up this shadow, Lord. This cobweb is weighing me down. Lord, Lord, it's time. It's time, Lord. It's time, Lord. It's time, Lord. I'm laying my bodies right before you because I know you can lift it up. You can lift it up. You can lift it up. I'm in a fellowship with you, Lord. That I want to last forever and ever and ever. Draw me closer. Draw me closer. I am dying. Oh Lord. I have not thy voice. And it shall thy Lord to me. Lord, I love to. I want again. I am dying. I am dying. Oh, Lord. From the depths of your heart. Why don't you tell him? And it told I love me. But I long to rise in the arms of.
this morning I release you into new fellowship with the Father, new fellowship with the Son, new fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That fellowship with the Lord this morning may it open new gates for you. Every gate that has held you in captivity, I command the gates to be broken in the name of Jesus. This month of January begin to experience early release of breakthrough. Every blessing assigned to you this morning begin to possess the gates of the enemy. Begin to possess your place in the name of Jesus. This morning, I welcome you to a new realm of glory. I welcome you to a new level of progress. I welcome you to a new level of promotion. That news you have been waiting for, that will herald your moving to that higher level. This morning, I command the news to be released. That letter you have been waiting for, I command the letter to be released. That grace you have been expecting, oh, begin to experience new grace. Begin to experience new gifts. This morning, every shadow, every doubt, every fear, every darkness, everything that has made your life to be shut down this morning, experience a new light. Experience a new light. Experience a new light. Experience a new light. Father, we thank you. As we go forth this month of December, let it be the best month we have ever lived. Help, raise help us for us in places we don't expect. Position us in networks that will not break in the face of the storm. Make us to work stronger and stronger. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.